So this is a PSA for art teachers. Digital art should be taught by art teachers. Well, that was easy. Let's go home. Ha! I'm joking. I have so much more to say. Should digital art replace traditional art? No! Our art is at this amazing, wonderful time where it is growing. And not only are there jobs available in it, but there are learners who are interested and have an appetite for jobs and careers in it. And there's this opportunity for them to actually learn something that no matter if whatever major they go into, it's going to be useful and important to them. And if we as art teachers let this opportunity for us to take the aesthetic reins on this beast, we're letting a huge opportunity pass us by. If you don't believe me on the job thing, I have some numbers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, animation is going to see an 8% increase as well as graphic artists going to see an 8% increase in the next 10 years. And according to, also according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, filmmaking is making a huge growth in the next 10 years. We're talking 13%. And that only means filmmakers and editors. Directors and producers are also going to see a 12% increase in the next 10 years. And it's not like we are seeing an increase of 15 jobs available. No, we're seeing an increase of 56,000 jobs. 56,000 jobs currently. And that means that it's gonna grow 13% from there. If you're wondering how that compares to other jobs, I looked up what a chemical engineer, because you know, engineering is always the one that they replace with art, let's be honest. Um, chemical engineering is actually only going to see an 8% increase in the next 10 years. And that's with about 40,000 jobs currently available. So we're making big steps. That's still not enough to convince you. In 2017, sales of intellectual property, which includes, includes film, video games, and TV shows, brought in $49 billion in revenue. That is our third greatest export of, of services from the US. Now don't get me wrong, art is always relevant, but usually I have to explain why. Um, why? Because fine arts create fine motor skills and the ability to collaborate and work with other people, as well as problem solving skills, collaborative skills, which I said twice, and it gives them just a break from the day of tests and worksheets that have studies have shown have really increased student achievement. For digital art, um, why? Because in digital art, think about every company that's popped up in the last five years. They're all online and need some sort of logo, video, or other creative outsource to get people interested in. The only things making money now are the ones that have a good digital representation online. Plus, we could list just about every company that you use right now has to have some sort of digital platform from it and nobody likes looking at ugly things. Here's the thing, there isn't explicit standards for technology right now. There are the ISTE standards, but that's more like an umbrella guideline for how all subjects could use the standards. So if we as art teachers don't take these FTEs, other teachers will. In fact, it's already started happening. In 2011, the teachers from Duluth started to see all of their digital art classes going to tech teachers and they pleaded with the school board in trying to get those classes back. If anyone's ever worked for a school district before, you should know how hard it is to get one FTE moved from one subject to another subject after it's been settled there. And it's still happening. I gave out a survey answered by art teachers from all over the country and I got a decent amount of responses back. I still want to get more, so if you know about this survey and you haven't taken it yet, I highly recommend taking it. I will even update this video, I promise. Out of the teachers that I got responses back from, 65% of them actually allow, actually have a digital art class in their school. And out of that 65%, about 52% of those classes are taught by other teachers other than art specifically business teachers and tech teachers. Colleges, you're not off the hook either. You gotta rally the troops and get some digital art classes because that's what kind of helps set the lessons for the future art teachers. They're not confident with stuff they don't know how to teach. And according to my survey, 78% of these teachers had never even had a digital art class in one of their higher education classes. I have two student teachers that I think have had maybe one digital art class before, and they're coming to student teach. 
in a digital art class. Somebody needs to get on top of the situation and fix it! Already business and tech teachers are taking over these graphic design positions and part of that is due to the Perkins Grant. The Perkins Fund is a really great grant that keeps industrial engineering classes still in classes. That's your shop classes, your electrician classes, uh, woodworking, um, metalworks, all of those are protected under the Perkins Grant, which was reinstated in July of 2018. And that is excellent. Those are great classes and plumbers and electricians and uh, blue collar jobs are super important and they are in high demand right now. I could go on for a whole hour about that. However, in 2002, graphic design was added to the list of the uh, of standards for the Perkins grant and stuff that you could get money for your school for which is awesome as well, especially since graphic design was on its way out from schools because they didn't see the future of it become, us becoming a completely online society. They didn't foresee that. Computers were just in one computer lab and they were in the side of the library. To give you a perspective of what was going on at the time, 2002 was four years before YouTube. That was three years before and two years before Facebook and one year before MySpace, people. Allison, can you explain what internet is? The important thing is teachers should be teaching filmmaking. Filmmaking not only is important for storytelling, but literacy and for collaboration, cooperation. A study came out from the Silicon Valley that someone had told me about and then I researched and it's right here where you can, where they're not looking for people who can code anymore. They're people looking for people who can be good people and can work in a group and create creative new ideas. But we shouldn't just be preparing people to be good art creators, but art curators and art consumers. I mean, think about how, I mean, we already try and teach our art students to have a good understanding of what good art is. Now that they are pressing like and they're putting their opinion out in the world, it's good to show them what good art looks like and good digital art looks like. So the future looks aesthetically pleasing. Our teachers aren't teaching digital art and filmmaking. This is how you get things like Suicide Squad. Nice to meet ya. Or TikTok. Or worse yet, the reason why we're all okay with Disney cranking out recycled material instead of creating new stuff. I do not want to see another Dumbo. The first one horrified me enough. Get those grubby hands out of that clay. I'm not sure what to do with my hand. Go straight to your computer lab and gum up some keyboards and then go back to that clay room because should digital art replace traditional art? No. But this isn't about art today. This is about what art's going to look like in our future. Another side note is that art classes are still being cut. I mean, after I sent out that survey, again from the survey, about 30, about 37% of the art teaching jobs have stayed pretty stagnant and pretty much the same for the last couple of years. And about 15% of them have gotten, have had their programs cut. And so that isn't a whole lot of positive forward growth. And this is during a time where it should be incredibly growing because this is such a good time for art. And so that's tragic to me. Like what is going to be the ethical kickback of having non-creative minds and non like and just linear thinkers creating kids to be creative we want them to think about problem solving and how to make something new not to regurgitate old information i see you disney i see you and you might be thinking well things are kind of slowing down i mean everything that exists kind of exists no, it's not true. But then there's the VR, and most people think it's here to stay. Only like a few people think it's not going anywhere. And even if it is, there is a lot of technology and a lot of money getting poured into it. Think about drones. Drones are another thing that like right now they're just being flown around for flow around sake. And just think about what can be utilized with them when put into the right hands. Back to VR. Um, our school got a VR headset, and in discoveries like Experience Wild Horses, all it is is just a camera and a couple of horses running past it. It's the VR equivalent of the train coming into the station. What should I do? Well, do you teach art? 
then try your best to maybe talk to your school board about getting digital art added. According to the surveys, 83% of all these teachers have got technology as either their building or their district goal. So you're, like, you have the ammo to making a good point. And digital art is a great way, digital art filmmaking is a great way to teach a ton of different digital techniques. Automatically it is a flipped classroom, automatically it is teaching collaboration, automatically it's teaching all of the tools that you would be using and how to use them in a super outside the box way. So propose a digital art class or just see if you can get it on your next class list if your students sign up for them. See what happens. You'll be surprised how many students are thirsty for some digital art in their lives. Digital art! So come on people, rally the troops, get your gear. I hope this made you feel inspired.